Hello and welcome back to the Natural Wellness Tips Podcast. This is your host, Dr. Jennifer Shaw. I am super excited to be here today with our guest, Carolina Vasquez. Uh, We're going to talk all about soul connection and soul disconnection today. It's going to be exciting. But before we do that, I want to thank you guys so much for tuning into the show. It means the world to me. Uh, If you guys haven't subscribed to the show, make sure that you do so you get notified each week when new episodes drop and come over to Instagram, say hi, natural wellness tips. I love to hear from you guys. So let's jump in with Carolina. Carolina's journey has been quite interesting, but I think many, uh, uh, a journey that many of us can relate to. Uh, she went from corporate to, you know, being very overwhelmed, having a lot of sickness, just being in a dark place to really, truly finding brightness and soul connection, clarity, uh, and wellness in such an inspiring journey. Since then, she'd cre- she's created spaces of sensitivity, self-discovery, and soul connection so that people feel the uniqueness, grace, and clarity that is their inner guidance. So she's not telling you to do things her way. Her goal in life is to help you figure out how to do things your way. And I am super excited to dive in. Carolina, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Jennifer. It's it's an amazing pleasure to be here with you. I was looking forward for today. Yes. Ah, it's exciting. We had a quite a funny little journey. We're going to call this third times the charm. We just had some (laughs) some time confusion, different things that, that made it. So today is a perfect day to have this conversation and I cannot wait to, to really jump in. So Uh, You know, I think that idea of corporate overwhelm of that nine to five exhaustion is just something so many people can relate to. Uh, So would you share a little bit more about your story, kind of where you came from? Absolutely. Um, I I actually was not, uh, was based in science. I, I, I did a career in science and management and I the thing is that I, in my belief system, I thought that if I do a certain amount of things or I achieve certain goals, I will be automatically happy, kind of by default, you know? So the, the narrative that I received in, in, my, in my culture and around me was if you, if you had a profession, if you had a career, if you get married, if you do this, if you do that, then the promise was that I was going to feel fulfilled and happy at at the end of it. And little did I know that by the end of my checklist, because I did all of that, I was not really necessarily feeling that fulfillment. So I found myself in places that I was not really passionate about. And I'm in this environment of corporate doing something that is not really pleasing my entire soul. And I I cannot feel myself fitting in the place and I cannot feel that fulfillment and that joy and you know and starts to instead of instead of trying to find a way out I start to self-judge myself I'm not good enough then I have to study more then I have to need another title then I need you know it was just a never-ending desire of trying to catch something else on the way to try to find this fulfillment and joy and peace and just, just be happy. No? Well, you know? we're taught so much of our lives. Like when you achieve this, you'll be happy. When you make money, you'll be happy. When you get that job, don't worry. Once you get that job, everything will work itself out. Oh, you know, you'll meet Mr. Right. And it'll just go, it'll do it smoothly from there. Or once you finish college, life is going to get so much easier. Like we yes. are taught that it's like, once you get to the next finish line, life is going to be great. But once you, once you realize that like, you, that next finish line just means that there's five new ones. It's like, oh, okay, now you finished college. So now it means you've got to find Mr. Right. You've got to get married. You should have babies. You should have your job. You should buy a house. Like you should, you know, you know, play a uh, bunco with your neighbors. Like these are all the shoulds now that are on the new list. So it's like your finish line just gave you five, 10 more finish lines. And it's exhausting to live that way. It's exhausting because it's not aligned with our soul is exhausting because it's not what we really, 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 really wanted. You were just following, we're just following instructions with the promise of being happy in a certain way. And, and that's what it feels so exhaust, ex, so draining in terms of energy. It was, it, and I felt that exhaustion and in, 
it's it separate myself from the soul and the more i separate from my soul the more i get lost in my own mental intellectual um, logic of why should i keep moving forward to the next finish line and to the next finish line so what are some of the things that somebody might be listening and say like okay i feel like that's me. Like what are, you know, we, we have the checklist that we're missing. What are some of the other things you see from people who are kind of disconnected from their soul that are really living for external satisfaction, right? So what are some of the things that you you've seen or heard or experienced to, to help well, people say, Ooh, that's me. Yeah. You can see it in, in three possibilities in your physical body, in your emotional body and in your thoughts. And if you observe those things very um, um, sincerely and, and, and not, ju not judging yourself, but just observing, you will find the clues if you're connected or not. So in your, your physical body will always let you know that there is something wrong, that you are doing something that is not really resonate with your own heart. So we start with little pains here, headache, exhaustion, um, some physical pain somewhere. And where the pain is located is all, also indicating to you what is it that you need to observe and address and correct. Have in a book that like breaks that down. It's in the other room and I can't remember the author right now. Um, I'll look it up here in a second, but it's a book that literally says like, are you having left toe, big toe pain? Like this might be what you need to journal on, think on. It's so fascinating. Okay. Yes. So yes. I, I'll and look it up. Yeah, yeah. Bring, bring the title of the book. That's important because that's, that's very important to people is to observe where the pain is and try to drill down what does that mean in your heart to you and what is that you have to do. And it also happened with the emotions. So when we're having low vibration emotions like um, anger, frustration, resentment, uh, jealousy, all these all this low negative emotions, there is an indication that that frustration is telling you something. It's telling you that there, there is a dissonance between what you really want and what you're really doing. It's, it's obvious. Mm -hmm. And also- well, We often just like push it down we're like no nope, yes nope, this is normal everybody else feels this way so I'm gonna feel this way so like shove it down shove it down you have nothing to complain about your life is perfect yes and that's so dangerous Jennifer because because it becomes like a pressure cooker you know the more you you pull down your emotions instead of actually address them and and raise with them it, it accumulates and it becomes pressure 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 and also di disconnects you even farther from from the soul, the voice of your soul. Mm. So in, in the emotion realm is also very nice um, indication if you are really uh, following a script and not following your heart. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay, so, so you physical, physical, emotional. physical, emotional. And the other one is your thoughts. And your thoughts are very, very critical because, because if you observe a little bit your self-talk, mm. how do you address yourself? you're going to find how, how much you're di in dissonance with who you really are. So if you're judging yourself profoundly all the time, if you're, if you are um, self-deprecating yourself, um, if you are mm, uh, not, not expressing things through happiness, but always through negativity or, or, you know, all this, all, all, all everything is dark or, limited or you're complaining all the time and uh all this expression with your voice and your words of those thoughts that are very limiting and negative is showing you that there is something inside of you that it needs to be resolved that it needs to be observed that you are not in peace inside of you I love that. I think those tangible examples of like physical emotional and thoughts is going to help people to really come down and say like, okay, yes, I see what she's saying. I see how that shows up in my life. Right. So the book I mentioned for the physical is the healing questions guide by Wendy and with an I, so W E N D I Jensen. And it's really cool. Cause it talks about like liver, like you have liver cancer. Okay. What are the questions you need to be asking yourself? Like it, it's really fascinating because I think these, these all tie in together, right? What we say to ourselves and the emotions 
So what we say to ourselves matters because they, they've done research on this. Like if you talk nicely to water before it freezes, it freezes in a beautiful pattern. Or if you play mm-hmm. beautiful music and while it's freezing, it freezes in a beautiful pattern. If you, you play like heavy, hardcore anger metal, it freezes in an ugly pattern. If you speak ugly to it, you know, they've done it with plants and all that. So our words matter. And most of our words are in our head. So that all ties in. And then we have the emotions. So if we're living in those negative, lower vibration emotions, then it's all going to show up physically for us. Exactly. You just nail it. You just nail it. Beautiful, beautiful thing to find awareness around, right? Yes. Yes. And that's, that's, that's the key awareness, body awareness. Somebody call it somatic awareness, yep. emotional awareness, thought awareness. Yeah. Beautiful. I love it. Okay. So once we have awareness of, huh, okay, I'm maybe not in alignment for myself. Like things are a little interesting for me. Hey, are you? Oh. So once somebody has that awareness and they realize that they're disconnected, they're not in, you know, they're, they're just not in a place of authenticity to themselves and their journey. And they're like, okay, I have the awareness. Now I think I need to make a shift. Where, where do we go? What do we do? Where did you go? Tell us, keep your, your story going. I'd love to hear more. Well, one of my biggest uh, mistakes that I did was that when I was in that disalignment, I, I didn't even knew that I was misaligned with my soul. I just knew that I was sick. I was in depression. I was tired and I didn't know what to do. And what I automatically did is start to do what other people do. So somebody said, oh, no, you have to do yoga. Okay, okay, okay. So then I ran and I went into yoga. No, no, you have to do meditation. Okay, okay, where is a course of meditation? And when I start, jump myself into a course of meditation. And then, no, no, you have to do crystals and, and things. And the, yeah, that's going to help you. Go, go, go. So I went and did, and it was not, I was not even thinking what was the purpose of what I was doing, what I was doing. I was just desperate to get out of my depression and try to find a way out. And can you believe, Jennifer, that I went a whole year to the gym, a whole year, every single day for two hours, and I couldn't reduce not even a pound, not even a pound. I I can believe it because I understand how the HPA access works and our hormones and our stress cycle works. But the average person's like, well, I'm doing two hours a week or two hours a day, seven days a week for an entire year. And that wasn't enough. So I need to do more when actually you need to do less. <laughs> yes. And, you know, I couldn't believe that. And I said, you know, I was overweight and I was, that's stressing me, but plus all the stress of the depression. And, and here I am trying to go to the gym two hours every day, nonstop. And there's nothing that is changing. And the meditation is not working. And I go to the psychologist and it didn't work. And I went to the doctor and it says, well, here, everything is okay. The numbers shows that everything is okay. I don't know. You know, maybe it's a stress. Okay. But, but, you know, so it was, my mistake was exactly not connecting to my soul to understand the inner guidance that we were talking from the beginning is is your soul that knows exactly where do you start that is convenient to you that is your most relevant step to go forward it's not about following other people's activities it's about you connecting with your own inner guidance and your soul because for so many people, the first step is not even the gym, not even the yoga or the meditation, none of that. Perhaps even the first step is just protection and getting out of that place where you were. Perhaps the first step is just decluttering your environment because it's so oppressing that you cannot even have a drop of energy to, to get out of bed and sustain anything. So, I, I, you know, sometimes the, that first step starts with a conversation that you've been non, you know, delaying and put it under the rock for years and years and years. 
And that conversation is the first step of this healing process and recovery. So the, here's the important, what the audience need to understand here is not, the answers are not found outside, mm -hmm. never. The answers are always in your heart, are always in the inside. Mm -hmm. And your soul has all the answers. So instead of going out, it's actually going inward and having this introspection, like you said in the book, you can have those references from the books and said, well, this is about this subject. What is wrong in this subject in my life? What is it that I'm not being honest in this subject in my life? Mm -hmm. What is it that I really want in regards to this subject? What is really important for me, regardless what the culture believe about it? What is my truth? What is my truth? Yeah. Oh, so powerful. So powerful. And I, as you're talking, I'm like going through my journey and it's like, there was so much advice given as I was like recovering from my accident and I was in a really unhealthy marriage and, you know, everyone was telling me what to do and I tried it all and none of it worked. Right. And when I look back and say, what advice has been the best that I've gotten from people, the advice when I get from people if I sit down and I'm talking to them and they're telling me what to do, it's not always the best, right? But when they sit down and ask me questions that help me figure out what to do, that's when you should listen. That's when you should tune in because those are the people that you want to be listening to and following <laughs> along with because they're helping you figure out for you what is the best thing, right? And and I remember I did so many of the same things following my accident. And, and it wasn't until I left, honestly, it wasn't, I left my ex-husband, an abusive relationship, right? And then I didn't like feel safe to give myself full space. I kind of like put myself in situations where I was like busy for a year and a half, right? And then after a year and a half, I, I got my own space. And I learned to love quiet and alone time and thinking and talking to myself and being with myself, right? And in that process was when I found myself and what I wanted actually in life. And since then, my life has blossomed beyond my wildest dreams and it just keeps getting better every day. But it wasn't until I gave myself space. And I'm not saying like for everybody that you need to get divorced and go live in an apartment by yourself. That's not what I'm saying at all. But for me, it was like, I, you know, I used alcohol, friends, family, like all of these things to just keep my mind cluttered and busy. And then when I finally was like, okay, I just need, I just need five minutes by myself. And I need to figure out who the F I am when I let go of everybody else's stories. And that was like the changing, the, 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 the huge shift in my life. Absolutely. And that's what, that finding ourselves is what people really, really are invited to do in, in this journey of healing and self-transformation. Mm, I love it. I love it because you're not sitting here saying, you know, I'm going to walk you through my eight point system. That's going to help you gain all the control back in your life. You're like, no. Oh. You got to find you. And I love that you help people find themselves. You help, you can be that guide, right? Because oftentimes we don't have someone in our lives who can guide us with those questions, who can hold our hand and, and ask us those right questions of like, what do you want? What brings you joy? What isn't working? Like really, like when was the last time the average person probably listening here, like, sat down and said what isn't working what is and what isn't working right yeah <laughs> so, yeah yeah <laughs> it's so important to do um so what are some simple things for the listeners that they could put in something they could put in place like right away that could help them find this connection to their soul to to their truth hmm well i'm, I'm fanatic of 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 self self growth so i think we have all the power to 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 recover and to find a new direction for ourselves mm -hmm. and i like things that are simple that are easy and that are direct and one of the one of the things that helped me a lot and that i invite people to do is to create what i call dates with your soul mm -hmm. so what what if what if you could schedule, schedule it sometimes in your whatever busy schedule you have, 
those little moments where you're going to have a date with your soul and and do it intentionally and purposefully where you can say you know what um today friday at whatever this time is it is my date with my soul and you treat it like it's this a date so you place your environment or you go to a walk in nature or you you know you go to whatever space that it's really resonant is in resonance with you and and imagine that your soul is just walking with you or having just imagine that it's a character that is just next to you and have this beautiful conversation how are you doing how do you think about this what do you think about that and just 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 indulge in the possibility of having this beautiful conversation and this date in that silence in that is only you with you mm -hmm. so in those dates it's not about anybody else it's not about social media it's not about having people that disturb that space yeah. it's really going into this beautiful moment of conversation with yourself and the more you go into that like just like you experience it the more you went into your silence the more you could listen to yourself because because the voice of the soul is very subtle is very subtle it's not going to shout you to you and it's so loving and it's never severing your own choice and your own free will so your soul will never superimpose you and tell you this is what you're going to do no it's always there with so much love and reverence looking to you and said my love i'm here for you anytime just ask any question and i will guide you anytime and it's it's in the silence and in this stillness and in this intimacy that you go in you with you that all of a sudden you're going to start to find your intuition gets gets awakened and through that intuition your soul will send you little clues where where you go next or what to do you next and as soon as you feel inspired or excited to do something after those dates for example oh my god i don't know i, I think I, I think i have to go to that place i don't know i just i just wanted to do it that is a direct message from the soul that is you got it you got the intuition and you're sent it there for a purpose and a reason mm. and and we start to live more aware of all the different magic that happens around us of those little clues that happens and synchronicities that start to unfold in front of you so i think this practice is easy to do it does not need any investment at all yeah. it just needs your sincere heartfelt desire of finding yourself. And when you place that intention and create these little spaces in your best convenience, um, there is no way you cannot receive a very accurate response that belongs to you, yeah. that is resonant to you and is the, the best relevant step to you at this moment of time. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So good, so good, thank you. That recommendation just like exceeded my expectations with that question, so thank you. I truly appreciate that, that info. <laughs> Okay, so Carolina, we're gonna begin to wrap up with our rapid fire questions. Are you ready for them? Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. What is your number one health and wellness tip for the listener? Well, soul connection, of course. <laughs> right? You're like, duh, go plan a soul date, do it. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Okay, so what is a healthy habit that you struggle with? You know, you've been on this journey, but it doesn't mean you're perfect. So what's something that, that <laughs> becomes a struggle for you? Indeed. For me, it has been segment intending. And what that means is that um, I place, I want to place my energy before I start any activity. Meaning I bring my energy into the most beautiful, loving, compassionate, and joyful place that I can. So before I start the activity, so I bring this energy to the table, to the group, to the person or whatever activity that I'm doing. And that's something that you can do intentionally. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes I just move too fast from one activity to the other without, without taking just one minute and placing this beautiful intention before I move into the next activity. And that changed your entire result. So that's when I'm have most trouble right now. I'm, I'm practicing a lot on that. <laughs> Presence, being in the present moment. Presence. Yeah. Here yes. now, here now. I love it. Yes. I love it. Okay. What are you most excited about in life right now? The possibility of serving and teaching people to connect with the soul. 
That's mm -hmm. the most exciting thing. I am a teacher of consciousness and of this. And I am really embracing my soul. I'm really embracing what I really want. So this is what I'm more excited for the first time I'm actually doing my passion. I love it. I love it. Okay. So I'm going to switch the order of these last two questions. because I think it's perfect, but where, where can people find out more about being guided by you being supported by you? And my website is www.carolinavasquez.com. You can find all uh, everything there and you can start with a free self-assessment tool that includes a free meeting with me. So there's no need to investment. You can start with a free thing. We start with a free session together and from there we grow. I love it. Beautiful. Carolina Vasquez. And you can see the link down below, guys. Check it out. Check out our website. It's beautiful. And yeah, check out the free assessment. Why not? Right. Uh, and <laughs> then you get to connect with her one on one like I am, which is amazing. OK, so the last thing I always ask is, well, I usually ask where people find you. But the other question I have for you is, what is your favorite book? I'm a bookworm and I love books. So what is your favorite book? My favorite book is called Soul Love from Sanaya Raman. And it's a very beautiful book that it was given to Sanaya by a non-physical being that call itself Orin. And this non-physical being is a very uh, loving being that explained to us what is the real soul love? What are the attributes and how can you feel it? And how can you practice it for you and for others here in this world with us? So it's very profound. It's very, it's very, um, life-changing because it has meditations and it has exercises for you to practice that soul love for love. you and for others mm. so it's beautiful so cool i'll definitely check it out well thank you so much for being on the show uh this was a long overdue conversation and it was absolutely incredible i am sure those listening took some nuggets away because i know i did uh, so thank you so much for joining me Thank you so much for the invitation. It was a pleasure and an honor to be with you and also get inspired with your journey. And I hope the listeners really uh, get inspired with this and we're not happy to be here. Thank yeah, you. Go take that free assessment, guys. Get a, get a connection of like, we'll get an idea of where you are on this connection or disconnection. I think it'll help so much in so many areas of your lives. So beautiful, beautiful. Indeed. Well, thank you, Carolina. And until next time, guys, namaste. Thank you.